Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Centauri Dreams. In this episode, I'll be building a new launch vehicle and probe to go and explore the asteroid moon, Hawking. Now, this launch vehicle we're going to name after uh, Bacchus, which is a uh, Mars-Venus crossing asteroid that orbits the sun. It's a very small asteroid, but is no less deserving of a name here. Now in this rocket build, I'm going to be building simultaneously bigger and smaller than I've built here before, because I'll need to start off with a huge lifter to get into orbit, and then end with a tiny probe to uh, eventually hopefully circularize and encounter Hawking. And I'm building this fairly early in the career. I don't ha I have not yet unlocked man capsules or half of the interesting science. So I'm going to jam the magnetometer in here. I'll use some solid rocket boosters and some of the cheap uh, liquid fueled boosters to get us up there, along with the first solar panels I've unlocked. And all of this is in the attempt to go low mass and high delta V. I have three little ant engines there to allow me to gimbal and spin in just the right ways. And this should hopefully let us get close to Hawking, at least close enough to get some science done. So the difficult thing about uh, doing this this early in the career is that I have not upgraded the tracking station so I don't have access to seeing exactly when um, I can encounter Hawking. So without that, what I'm going to do is try to f use the same method we used to go to our moon from Earth and just wait for it to rise while attempting to be in the same uh, inclination as it. So hopefully that'll get me close, if not a direct encounter. The downside is, since Hawking is so small, we will end up probably shooting right by it. We probably will get a nice, uh, close, uh, I guess, encounter with it. Get some good pictures, but we're not going to get into orbit with this first round. Because getting into that orbit requires us to kill almost a thousand meters a second of delta V. ditched nicely and now we're starting to pan over now this is run at two times speed because it takes a, about 10 minutes to burn to orbit here since this is a real scale solar system the clouds do look nice the stars are as days go on now that we're about two months into the game you can start to see uh, alpha a and alpha b split apart from each other and that's because as in El Cano orbits A, it'll go between both of them. So we'll have kind of a twilighty night here in a, little, in a couple of days. Well, realistically about six months from now. But, you know, probably next episode. <laughs> Now, between recording the last episode and this episode, I did finally learn how to use um, X Science because I was actually clicking on the completely wrong button. There's one that gives you a list of all the science experiments, and there's the one that tells you when you can do them. So now that I've got that figured out, I've been able to uh, see quite a few more things that I can get. And there we go, nice stage separation. 
Now, one of the things I did in this last update of Centauri Dreams was I went and I renamed all the biomes and gave them kind of some flavor because for the last couple of versions, I've just been using, oh, this, these are the sands, these are the uh, deserts, craters, etc. Nothing too interesting. So I decided to add some flavors and uh, kind of give them give them names based off of things they relate to from Earth or our galaxy, or solar system, sorry, galaxy. Yeah. So we're almost into orbit here. Looks like we're coming up on uh, Apple Maps. Now it does look like we are not in even close to the same inclination as Hawking. So we will try to correct that on our way to Hawking, but more than likely we're going to have to go for where our ascending node and descending node will uh, interact. And hopefully we'll get there at just the right time where we see an uh, encounter. It's not too likely. Really what I'm aiming for here is to get that high altitude science above Elcano. And if we get lucky, we'll get the encounter with Hawking. But otherwise, uh, our next launch should will have enough money to upgrade the tracking center and get into a nice orbit around Elcano. So now I'm in a stable orbit around Elcano, but I am completely out of plane with Hawking, which means without wasting a bunch of Delta V, I will not be able to get a good encounter. What I'm going to try to do here is raise my Apple Apps up high enough that I can do an inclination change at its ascending node, and hopefully I'll be able to change there to get an encounter, although it's not likely. I'm going to skip over uh, the first part of this, however, because nothing really happens. It's just me in map mode making small adjustments. Um, I'll cut forward to when we're uh, trying to get to Hawking. I am able at this altitude to get some magnetometer data, which might give me enough science to unlock a few more things and get us that final step to Hawking. So you can see here that I'm getting very close to Hawking, we can actually see it there in the distance, but I am running out of Delta V and there's no way I'm going to be able to make it up and get an encounter with it. So what we're going to do is grab the science we can from this altitude and relaunch with an upgraded tracking station, which will help me see when I'm in the right inclination to launch. Except for the upgraded tracking station, this launch is exactly the same as the first. Here I'm going to wait until um, we get a low encounter. We're about at the ascending node or descending node of Hawking, and I'm going to launch into that window, which is what um, rocket scientists refer to as their launch window, is when the planet itself lines up with the uh, angle of the planet they're trying to get to. So it looks like Hawking is about 17 degrees inclination to us and we're going to go ahead and launch with that and hopefully as I'm expending tons of delta V getting into orbit I'm able to wiggle myself into that right plane and you'll see me doing that as we go up I'll be uh, pulling a little more south than usual and that'll allow me to bend the orbit into it, the right um, inclination so I'm going to cut most of this because we just watched this launch after the first part where I'm uh, lining myself up with the inclination of honking. There really isn't much different. and our separation at closest approach. So what we're going to do is burn up so that we get close. We, our apoapsis is as far out as it can be at the descending node. And then at the descending node, change um, the relative inclination. So now I'm at about 5 degrees to Hawking, whereas before we were close to 30 degrees. And this will help us immensely with getting close enough to get that encounter. So after using an orbit to drop my inclination, 
I'm going to start burning to get to the same height as Hawking. Right about as it is coming over the horizon, but a little earlier because I'm using a... Um, because it's a lot closer than our moon, and it orbits faster. So therefore, we're going to have to start earlier because it'll take us longer to get there. Well, it'll take us less time to get there, sorry. So now, our inclination has dropped to about 2 degrees, a little bit more. And we're going to keep dropping it as we get closer. And we're watching our closest approach drop there to about 6 millimeters. And if I remember correctly, um, Hawking's sphere of influence is about 100 kilometers, which is very, 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 very small in comparison to most bodies we deal with in stock Kerbal Space Program, which just makes it even harder to get an encounter. So now that we're close, I'm going to pop over to map view and take a look. Now, map the stock rendezvous planner, which is the one that shows you markers on your orbits, that's, uh, it's not as precise as MechJebs. MechJebs uses the real numbers, and KSP uses only the numbers you can calculate right now for your orbit. So, whereas on the orbit you'll see you're five kilometers away, and after you pass that point, you'll get even closer. And sometimes it just doesn't line up quite with what you know, will really happen, which is why in the stock game you can watch yourself fly right by uh, fly right by an encounter that it said you had that wasn't actually there. So we're going to let this orbit fly by and make another attempt. It actually takes me a couple orbits to get uh, Hawking to line up exactly where I need it to be. So just over four days of time before we're able to burn that final bit and get an encounter. And after that, we're just going to slowly work our way up there and grab some science on the way. And now we're, we're going to be falling back to Elcano at the encounter, which means our relative speed to Hawking will be extremely high and I probably will not have enough delta V to circularize as not only do I have to stop my orbit around Elcano, I have to stop it in such a way that I'm extremely close to Hawking when I do it. And since Hawking's sphere of influence is only about 100 kilometers, that leaves a very small window for us to do this. And I'm not sure I'm going to have the thrust in this probe to do it. Normally with doing this, you're going to have to get a probe with thrust of at least half a G. This one has something like a third or a fourth of a G. And that's only when it's mostly empty. So here we are. We're pretty close. Looks like we got a good period up. So the best way to prepare for this, and this is where I mess up, is I'm trying to wait until periaps burn because that'll give me a good orbit. But with such a low thrust to weight ratio on this probe, I won't be able to slow down fast enough to make it count. But we are able to get some really good science here, and that'll help us uh, hopefully start our manned program back on Elcano. And now we're just going to watch Periaps rush up to us, and hopefully we'll be able to slow down, but since it's a recorded in post, well, I know the fate, sadly.
Now we're down low and grabbing even more science and getting even more world first rewards. So let's go ahead and point retrograde. Grab some more science. I'm waiting till the last possible moment, which was the wrong decision. I should have burned as soon as I could and just uh, adjusted for how far from periaps I was, but instead I waited until we got to periaps to burn. And that means that I was very high above Hawking when I finally managed to stop my orbit. So here we go. We're going to burn. It's going to take a long, long, long time. And we're going to watch Hawking slowly slip away. Hawking was one of my favorite lines to have made. And definitely very colorful. Very orange. Originally it was kind of a reddish, like, roasted asteroid, but I deemed that too unrealistic. That in lava is very hard to texture in KSP. So I decided to uh, give up on that and give it a more realistic, uh, Phobos or Deimos-like color. 